What's up, Jenny? Hi, Tesho. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm still trying to, I'm still mastering this social media thing. So I'm trying to get the tweets out and then put it on Instagram, all this stuff. But okay, I'm tag working me on, on Instagram it. and I'll, I'll redo the, your uh, sure. Instagram post. For <laughs> sure. Uh, so how are you doing today? How's your day been? Uh, well, I think we should get to that later when we talk about mental <laughs> health. <laughs> all right. I love it. I love it. That sounds great to me. I see all Where these do- Orlando City people in here. I love it. Yeah, and it's it's actually very cool because it's a lot of the same, uh, a lot of the same people. Like mm-hmm. you know, come to these over and over. So I'm kind of building like a little bit of a community over here. It's been it's been really fun, and it's I so funny wife? because yeah, yep she's she's like always here. Supported. She's basically the producer of the show. So oh, I love that. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Let's see what question but, she has for you. Yeah, it's funny because. Um, because I feel like a year back or whatever, or two years ago when you were with Orlando, I remember you guys were talking to me about if I wanted to start a podcast. Yes. And I was like, no, I don't think so. And then here I am basically doing like a podcast. So it no, all came I remember full circle. Being like, you're the guy. I think you're the guy that should do this. Can we please do this? And you were like, nope, not really interested in that. <laughs> yeah. Even at the <laughs> beginning of this year, I know, even at the beginning of this year, I was like thinking of doing a podcast. And then it was just like, it just was a little bit overwhelming, honestly, to just think of like every single week having to prepare like, say one hour's worth of like content with somebody. But then this is like, it's like a podcast with training wheels because like, if I don't know what to say next, usually somebody will come up and like ask a great question and just kind of keep the conversation flowing for us. So it's, it's pretty perfect. Did it start because of the pandemic? Um, No, honestly, I think it just started because I was like, people need to know more about soccer players in general. And I just like wanted to put myself out there a little bit more because I felt Mm -hmm. like people, people like know me as a, uh, as a soccer player, you know, but they, they had no idea who I was as a person. So I was like, man, I just want to kind of just share who I am as a person. And it's been going great so far. So I really enjoyed it. And who is that, by the way? (laughs) I don't know. I guess. Everything that's coming out of my head in my profile picture, that's a great start. But, but, uh, is that like a combination of all your interests? I can't even see it right now. Yeah, kind of. So I had worked, I don't think she's here right now, but there's this uh, lady, Marima. She's actually a fan of yeah, Orlando yeah, City. Familiar. Yeah. And so she, like, she made this for me. It's super cool. But <clears throat> it's just like a bunch of stuff I'm interested in. But I don't know. At the core, I guess, like right now, I'm a, I'm a dad and a husband. You know, that's always first, then a soccer mm-hmm. player, and then, and then everything else. So, all right, I've got I've got all the stuff tweeted out, everything like that. Everybody, if you're in this space, like, please uh, share it, tweet it out. We'll get as many people in here as possible. But here we go, Jenny. Thank you for coming. Uh, I guess let's just start for those people who don't know you. Like, who are you, and how did you get, you know, to to where you are now? Um, I'm Jenny Chu. I used to be Orlando City's reporter. Uh, um, we used to work with Tesho there, and. Um, now I work for CBS Sports and I cover Champions League and the U.S. Men's National Team and sometimes NWSL and really whatever they put me to do. Um, and I guess what am I beyond that? I'm, I'm a sister. Uh, I like the beach and I like yoga. I don't really know what else, <laughs> what else there is to say about myself. I got to think of <laughs> what I would want to put in my graphic if, so that I could know what to say. I think everyone so should how- think about that. What's your like <clears throat> elevator pitch? Because I don't have one. <laughs> I know it, it's so tough. I feel like that's that's a good thing though when you can't like boil it down to something too small, you know. Right. I, I feel like it's a good thing. So so you're a reporter for CBS. Like, how did you break into that? Because it seems like you know I'm sure a ton of people want to be on TV, professional soccer. Like, how did you end up even breaking into that field in the first place? Yeah, I guess it was kind of organically. Um, I went to journalism school where I thought one day I wanted to be. Um, in soccer reporting and anchoring and stuff. And so in college, I had to take those specific classes. And when I went, you know, into journalism school and broadcast journalism, I realized there's no way I could be in front of the camera. I have like paralyzing anxiety. I black out, like barely passed like the course for broadcast journalism because of my anxiety. And I was like, okay, I know that that's not what I want to do. But I was so far into the course once you start being on camera that I had to graduate with that, if that makes sense. So, okay, I graduated with that degree knowing that I wasn't going to get into it um, because of my anxiety. And then I went 
to go play soccer overseas in Australia. And while I was there, um, someone was, I went to a game and this guy was reporting and I just found it really interesting to watch him doing his job. So I asked him, Hey, do you mind if I shadow you for the rest of the game? And he was like, no, absolutely not. So I just watched what he did. I thought it was really interesting. All he was doing was taking his opinion of a game and kind of sharing it. And I was like, well, I, I have my opinions about this game as well. Like, this is cool. So I just introduced myself to these people and I got super lucky because in Australia, I guess not that many people speak Spanish <laughs> and they needed a Spanish speaker for some interviews they did with these, these players coming in from Spain into the Australian A-League and they didn't have anyone else. And so they called me up and then I did the interviews and I realized like, oh, I'm kind of, I kind of really enjoyed that. It kind of felt um, really natural for me to do that. So once I did that, I kind of restructured my mind of like, okay, maybe that's something that I can do. And then I went to get an internship in Portland, worked for the Timbers there, and their reporter's last day was my first day. So it was super weird because as she's going out, they realize I play soccer, I am um, knowledgeable in this, and I went to journalism school. So they put me on to do like their post-game interviews just because of that. Um, and then I started to do vlogs by myself just like as a means of creating. And you know, when we talk about mental health, that was a, an outlet for my mental health at the time. And my vlog got seen by, his name is um, Eric, oh my God, I can't even remember his last name right now, but Eric was head of the um, comms department and stuff like that at the time. And he hired me, um, Ed Cahill hired me, and then I moved into the broadcast world, started hosting and being the reporter there. That's awesome. The, the first thing I think about with that is just like, a lot of times people just see someone successful, you know, and they think like, you know, like, oh, you just got lucky, like, you just ended up there somehow. But, like, hearing your story, like, it's clearly not the case, you know? Like, there was a whole journey, like, a lot of work. Even, like you said, like, starting a blog on your own. Like, how uh -huh. many people are, are out here, like, putting themselves out there like that? Not many. And I feel right. like that's, like, that's what it takes, you know? Like, like anybody I know, I, you know, I know mostly athletes, but I think people underestimate, like, what it takes to become a professional athlete. You know, they think, oh, you were born gifted or whatever. Like, sure, we were. But then a lot of people put in a lot of work. And I feel mm -hmm. like the same can be said for, for any other profession. Like, for you as a reporter, like, you know, even and, and you even said maybe you weren't naturally gifted in it because you were nervous at first, which is funny to hear. <laughs> I'm glad you think it's funny. But, no, I think, that, <laughs> you know, when you talk about, like, the, the different athletes and there's people that stand out in that sense in the way that they work hard and the way that they, you know, kind of structure their, their minds around like getting better in, in every aspect of their being, meaning, you know, um, reading books and like concentrating on their rehab and all of those other aspects of, of soccer. And as the reporter, I could see that close to the team, like who did that, who cared enough to go above and beyond just coming to practice like everyone else. And Tesho, you were obviously one of those players that really stuck out, which is why I constantly gave credit, like, we, we got to get Tesho more in the spotlight. We need the player, like the fan base to know more about Tesho because you, you were an embodiment of what a player should be in, in mean, in, ugh, in terms of like being multi-dimensional, if that makes sense. Yeah. I, I appreciate that so much, honestly. Cause, and that's something that, you know, as I've gotten like older, I feel like I'm more aware that it's actually kind of something that I can bring to the team. You know, I, I feel like I've always been kind of that, that person, but now I'm like, actually, it adds a ton of value to the team to have people that can like really set an example out here, you know, and, and so I've like really tried to lean into that as I've, I've gotten older and gotten more experienced, like really trying to like be an example every single day for, for a lot of the younger guys or people who are new to the league or whatever the situation. Well, I think, I think one of the things that you mentioned earlier was that like people don't take that risk. Um, like starting their own vlog and like whatever I, I did, like I introduced myself to people when I get the opportunity to and stuff. And I think that a lot of us live in that fear of like making, I don't know what people are going to think of us or how people are going to judge us. Um, like just now I posted a reel and in my head I had this whole like, ah, what are people going to say about this? And it's like, who cares? Like I, who cares? Like the, the chances that I have been taking make my life better. So like my vlog, I, I, so many people told me not to start my blog and people were like, I don't know, nobody's going to watch this. Like, I don't know about this, Jenny, like taking people through your like healing journey. Like, I don't know, the or original Orlando city people probably know, um, isn't like a great thing that doesn't put you in the best light. And that got me my job at Orlando city and then got me my job at Chelsea eventually, and then got me a job with CBS sports. So like, I think learning to take our chances is kind of like remembering that other people don't really matter as much in our journey. Um, cause I, th I know it's hard for me to remember that at times. 
Yeah, and it's like people really honestly don't care <laughs> too much like what you're doing, you know. Exactly. Especially if you're like just starting out, and it, and I felt like exact. I actually I right now feel exactly the same as what you're talking about because I've been like trying to tweet more about like you know finances and real estate investing, and I'm like putting it on my Instagram every day, mm-hmm. and I'm like, man, I'm probably I- annoying a ton of people, and but people then I'm don't like, care. Who, but who cares? <laughs> yeah, but they don't care, and it's yeah. like, and if they do. Then, oh, well, like they can just unfollow me. And then like, you know, maybe the the 10 people who stick around will actually, you know, be interested in what I want to talk about and benefit from it. Exactly. Exactly. So it's like, who cares, you know, if people, (laughs) what people think, but it's really hard to get over that, honestly. 100%. Oh my God. I'm telling you, like I've been doing it. I've been consistently putting myself in those positions where I feel uncomfortable about it. Just now I had that moment where I was like, I don't know. People are not going to like understand. They might misinterpret this. They might judge me. They might. And I was like, who cares? It's my life. Like, come on, Jenny. So yeah, for it's sure. really natural to feel that way. And I feel like whoever wants to start something, I think, oh my gosh, is this Tosin? I think Tosin's in here. Um, I think Tosin's a great example of that. Tosin puts himself out there all the time. I don't know if you can see. I guess his name isn't Tom. He should come up. He should come up. Hit the uh, request, Tosin. Tosin, and we'll get you up here. How do you how do you request him? I don't know how to do that. Tosin, come up. And he does all of his <laughs> content. Like, this incredible content, his, just like you say, your tweets, your Instagram, his tweets are hilarious. And like, it's just taking a risk. Like, who cares what people think? The things that he says can anger like 90% of people sometimes, and he doesn't care. And I think that that's like wonderful about him. Yeah, that's the cool thing about the internet, though, is like, literally, you could be annoying to like 99.9% of people and still have a million people love you, you know, exactly. so <laughs> is exactly. really perfect. Is he a... Uh, nigerian yes scams yes. okay okay he's, he's coming up right now ah. i don't know if his wi-fi is spinning so that it'll be great to hear from him do you have any tips like for you know maybe anyone out there who's like man you know i do want to put myself out there a little bit more but i don't even know i don't know like I'm, they're they're too afraid right now like do you have any tips for like how to get over it or just like first steps I think right now is the perfect time. Like everyone's creating, like everyone's bad at it at first, you know, like everyone's making reels and TikToks and I don't even know how to make those, but it gives us a platform, which not didn't always exist. You know, I was on YouTube out here, like learning how to video edit and stuff where these things give you the absolute, like easiest way to edit them. You just put in the videos and they, it basically spits it out itself. Um, I don't know. I just think that it's a great time to, to do any of that because everyone's trying it and everyone's going to fail if that makes sense i don't yeah. know if that helps but like <laughs> i'm doing like these random reels and tiktoks like who knows what hits um but why not yeah well you said like who knows what hits like i'll just send out a bunch of tweets and i swear the ones i think are the best no nobody likes them <laughs> you know and then some <laughs> of the ones that i think are just like ah oh, they're okay like people will love it you know so you don't yeah. know what hits like just keep putting yourself out there and then in yeah. terms of like um, video content specifically, which I haven't really done any, but somebody gave this tip once, which I thought is great. They're like, make say like 10 or 20 videos, just be like, I'm going to make a video every day and just Uh don't put any pressure on yourself to post it just so you can get better at like talking to the camera, you know? And so then you have like, you've practiced, like make it as if you were going to post it, but then don't post it, you know? Mm -hmm. And I actually did that that with, with TikTok Cause I was like, Oh, maybe I'll start doing some TikTok videos. And I did that. And then I got better at TikTok, actually. I didn't post any of them. I made, like, I don't know, probably, like, 10 videos. And I got better at them. But then Mm -hmm. I realized, like, uh, you know what? I'm not not really enjoying making these videos anyway. So then I stopped. But I really did get better. So, like, if I would have realized, oh, you know what? I am enjoying this. I am getting better. Then I could have posted them. And, you know, it would have been great. So I think that helps. I think that's something really cool for Tosin to speak on. Because he does create a lot of content, like, in every space. He writes as well. Tosin, turn your mic on. What's up, Tosin? Hey, what's going on, everyone? How are you? I'm good. Are you, are you, so I'm assuming you're Nigerian. My Nigerian brother over here. I love that. Yeah, I'm actually Yoruba. <laughs> to be specific. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Just like me. There we go. Yeah, yeah. There we go. So, yeah, I guess, you know, Jenny was talking so highly of your content and just, you know, your your boldness and putting yourself out there. So I'd love for you to speak on that a little bit. Thank you, Jenny. Appreciate that. Um, first of all, Jenny's a rock star, so she's... I cut a lot of the videos that she does, so it's like amazing to see how much she's grown from when she first started till now. So it's like mm-hmm. one of the things that I'm like super like happy to see. Thanks, um, Justin. What you saying? What you saying about like putting myself out there as far as content, right? Yeah. Um, I actually so four years ago I started a um, podcast YouTube show with a couple of my friends, um, and funny enough, I actually did not actually want to be in front of the camera. I was the one who was just like, nah, it's not me. Um, but I think throughout just doing it more and more, I realized, like, I actually enjoy doing it. 
Um, and the biggest thing is like, you don't really know where to start in a sense. You just kind of just do it. And next thing you know, it, it kind of takes off. So that's kind of like how I started my journey, like working in the sports soccer, just really just really put myself out there. It's like, just happened in a way that you just kept putting content out there and it just stuck. And so now do you enjoy being in front of the camera? Absolutely love it. Yeah. It's like one of my most favorite things to do. I actually like really enjoy doing it. That's funny that both of you said like you went from not wanting to do that to and now like I guess your full time jobs are being in front of the camera. <laughs> yeah. It's kinda crazy. Yeah. I think we no. all like get to our calling in, in, in our own ways. Um but if you're meant for something, like it's it's gonna happen. Just Yeah. So true. So true. I love that. Like you don't you don't know what the journey is, you know? Okay. And honestly, like what I found in my life, too, is a lot of times when I feel like the most nervous about something is when it's like you're like right there about to break through to something cool, you know, like like say before a big game or whatever. Or like I'm sure you because for those who don't know, you you were reporting on the Champions League final, right, Jenny? Uh-huh. So, so like I'm sure you felt so nervous before that. But then probably looking back, that's like got to be one of the best days of your entire life. Oh, absolutely. But you know yeah. what? That actually the champions league final just because it's like the one moment that i can really remember and, and recall to memory um i i have anxiety and I, i've talked about my anxiety openly so if anyone like orlando city fans they already know about this and anyone who's followed me on my my youtube journey i, I talk about it constantly but the um champions league final day was just like a completely different situation for me because I always get nervous and I expect that nervousness. And for whatever reason, that day I felt so calm before we went on air. I just felt like I was supposed to be there. And I think like after that, I've been chasing that high, like chasing that moment of like, I belong here, I'm supposed to be here, that I really didn't ever understand before. And that's why you get so nervous. Cause you're like, I don't know if I belong here. I don't know if I'm good enough to be here. But in that moment I was like, no, I'm, I'm here because I deserve to be here. And I felt so calm and, um, I don't know. I think that's what we're all chasing. That's awesome. So do you think that that was like a hard turning point in your life? And do you feel like now every time you, you were like reporting on a game, do you feel, you know, still in that same way? Or is it, or are you, are you like back to being a little bit anxious every time? Like, was it a one off or is that like, that was a hard turning point for you? It, so both, I think. So the, the difference between like being an Orlando city reporter and being a CBS sports reporter is that I have a long time in between my, my shows. So like when I have a breakthrough, say in an Orlando city broadcast, I have a game in three, four days that like that breakthrough can continue on. Like I can continue to have that momentum of like, okay, I'm not scared anymore. But then when you go, you know, with CBS sports, I'm working like big events every, you know, maybe, maybe I have a month before I have a big broadcast. Like that momentum has like slowed down and I, I'm nervous again. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it was sense. a big moment, but then I still get like anxious because I have like these big lulls of like, oh, I haven't been proving my worth recently. I need to prove it before I can feel that confidence again. Yeah, like the idle time just <clears throat> just like lets you overthink a little bit, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I That's... feel like that happens with coaches, say like of national teams versus coaches of club teams. That like the coaches of the national teams, they just all they do is like sit around planning for like one game every other month or something like that or two games, and so they can probably overthink it a bit. But um, okay, well, so since you were talking about you know anxiety a little bit, I feel like it's a good time to just say like why why are you so open about that? It's a thing that a lot of people experience, just like anxiety or just mental health issues, I guess in general. So like, why did you decide to be like you know what I'm just gonna I'm just gonna talk about it. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how exactly I came about it. I think it was just um, a very big part of me that it became kind of natural to, to talk about. Like, you know, if you met me in, in person, um, you knew that about me. Like, you can kind of feel it off of me um, when it was really bad. And all my friends knew about it. Like, anyone that knew me knew it. So it kind of became a joke. Like, oh, Jenny's anxious right now. Like, whatever. Um, to the point where if you can like normalize it and you can like talk about it out loud. Once I learned that what I was feeling and what I was going through was anxiety, it, it helped me so much because before that I thought that my mind just worked weird and I, you know, I was crazy and all this stuff. And then when you were able to say like, Oh, I'm just anxious right now. And like, this is a normal feeling. It helped me. So then in helping myself, I thought like, Hey, I should help other people too, because I didn't know what this word was. I didn't know what this feeling was. And now that I understand it, maybe other people can like, recognize that that's what they're going through and they can get help too so yeah it took me a long time to get to that point to know what it was that I was going through what I was feeling um, but once I did it really did help me and talking about it takes away the shame and the shame is like 
um, a huge part of why people get more depressed and more anxious. So I, I was really open about it for a long time. Man, that's such a good point. Like the shame of it, because probably people are like, you know, why do I feel like this? Like everyone else is feeling so confident and happy and I'm like, I'm feeling nervous and they, they might feel bad about it. So that's why I think it's so cool to see someone like you who's who's had so much success and is like doing things, so many things in public to talk about it because it just makes it seem so much more like normal to everyone else who's just, you know, who's just going through their regular day life yeah. and feeling the same things to be like, all right, everybody feels it. Like, and, and maybe it does take away that shame, like you said. Yeah. Nico's in here now. Nico, Nico knows the anxiety I go through before a, a broadcast because a lot of the times he's standing next to me. And he's <laughs> always told me, like, I don't understand, like, what's going on in your head? Like, I don't understand why, why you feel this way. Like, you're fine. Like, you do great when you go on and stuff. But that feeling of, like, not being able to breathe and, like, your brain just goes completely blank. At, like, it's terrifying, before, especially before you go on national television. Um, but then you learn, I mean, I've learned ways to, to cope. I've learned ways to, to get better at it. Um, so it's been a journey. And I think that anyone that, that, that can, you know, I, I know a lot of people are tuning in for the mental health aspect. It's like, it's a never ending journey. You know, it is, it's up and down. It's like, I'm not saying like, Oh my gosh, I'm not anxious anymore. And I'm not anything like I have currently in the last couple weeks, um, been in like this crazy depressive episode that I didn't know I like triggered myself until I had therapy today. And my, my therapist was talking me through it and it's like, okay, like this is just a journey. Like, you know, I'm going to have ups and downs. I just have to learn more about my brain and how I work. Um, so I thought it was really interesting. I'm like, I'm going to talk about mental health today after today has been one of my worst mental health days. And this week has been horrible. But like, that's just being honest. Like, that's, that's the reality yeah. of living with mental illness. And I think that being open about it and being okay talking about it is so empowering to other people. And it, it, it's empowering for me, too, because I don't want to feel shame, like, towards what goes on with me in my head. Like, this is who I am. And I'm going to always be this way. And, and there's power in being able to claim that and know that I'm working hard to get over it and to like for work sure through all my moments no i love that i love that all right so we have a few people that have been up here for a while so i'm gonna get to them um yeah i'll go with mike mike duncan go ahead first my guy what's up sorry to jump in front of uh mighty mike oh did, i didn't know who was first so i just i, I went with you <laughs> sorry sorry mighty mike my bad we'll get to him I'll, next. I'll be i'll be i'll be quick man i promise so uh yeah, Je Jenny, first of all, congratulations on, on all your success, you know, from seeing you come from Orlando and doing national broadcasts like that. Yeah. You know, we, you know, we love our own here in Orlando. So every time you pop up on TV, we're all just like, so excited for you. So yeah, thank you. Uh, congratulations on that. And then definitely, as soon as I saw that this one was like mental health, I was like, oh, this is, this is the Tuesday I've been waiting for. Oh. We've had a couple of them so far where I've been able to touch on it. But uh you talked about how, you know, empowering it can be to other people when you're speaking about, you know, these own struggles that you've had. And even as someone like me, I, I have had pretty bad anxiety for about a decade. And only just in December, I was actually diagnosed with uh, panic disorder and started taking, you know, therapy sessions and actually treating it for the first time. And there really is a point where it's like, you you do kind of feel like you're going crazy. And then people tell you, if you think you're going crazy or you're, you're not crazy, you're yeah. not aware of it. But for me, a lot of the issues usually came from, you know, big life changes. So new jobs or all of a sudden the pandemic changing everything. And then uh, more recently in December, all of a sudden it's like, hey guys, welcome back to work, even though Omicron is technically a thing. So I'm just curious how you've handled, you know, you've had lots of life changes and new jobs over the past couple of years. How have you kind of handled those changes? And would you say those those affected the anxiety or was it kind of like usually pretty constant with all that? Ooh, wow. Oh, well, thank you for always tuning in and, and being proud. I'm, I'm super proud of Orlando City as well. Um, I don't think I've handled it well at all. <laughs> um, I recently just moved apartments and I've been a mess ever since I moved. So uh, I can't claim that I'm like this guru of like having my life together. Um, I think you're right that the changes do affect a lot of things. Um, what, while you were saying that, I realized like something that triggered me recently was, was a big change in my life. Um, but I think what I've learned is that I don't get triggered as much and I don't have like the same intensity of symptoms if I stay on my schedule and my routines. So like, like make, making sure that I'm going to yoga is such a big part of my mental health, making sure that I'm journaling, making sure that I'm 
I'm going to my therapy sessions and I'm taking my medication. And when I don't do those things, my mental health is, is, is bad. Um, and I think making sure that I stay on top of those things that I know are very important to me and very important for my mind to be calm and like be able to think clearly. And when, when there are big changes, it's really hard to do that. Like sometimes my mind gets really, really foggy and cloudy and I don't really know like what's going on. And that's something that I've had to work through in therapy and with medicine. And um, I don't know, I think for a long time, I thought that that was, that was a negative, especially the medication aspect. I, I know you just talked about the therapy. I fought back about medicine for so long. Like I'm not, nothing's wrong with me. I'm fine. I, I, I manage myself well in social settings and I'm fine, blah, blah, blah. And medicine completely changed my life. Um, in terms of oh, I'm in the same boat. I, I said therapy because there's like sometimes you don't just want to like say yeah, medication yeah. because people automatically think just like, oh my god, is this person just gonna like snap and like do something to me in the middle? Like because people don't really understand it exactly. But it's almost like it's it's a that comes from people like us maybe not really wanting to talk about it that much, so people don't hear about it because mm -hmm. you were talking about how people would be like, oh, what are you talking about? You're you're fine. You're totally calm and collected. Yeah. People say that about me all the time, and inside I'm just like, yeah, no, I'm good. My body's just flooding me with enough adrenaline to to fight a bear while I'm driving on the highway. You know, well, one hundred percent. It's yeah, and I just gotta say though, you're talking about like taking risks and journaling and mental mental health. Like, does Tesho know you're coming for his Tuesdays? Because that's pretty <laughs> much like what he's been building up. No way. Well, she's she's still in my she's still in my talking <laughs> points, huh? Or maybe she's been listening. She's been listening. Maybe that's the thing. I got to tune in yeah, more often to this I journaling. Mean, Jenny Tuesday just works. I'm Ooh, just saying. That's true. You might need to pick a different. We we need her to get a different day. I, I got a steak on Tuesday though already. I don't want her to take me over like that. But yeah, like like you said, journaling. I I love it. And and you know you know what you guys were talking about too. It's like there are things like if if people are dealing with certain situations, like there's a lot of proven things that have worked. And I I feel like journaling, at least for me, is like one of them that really helps me clear my mind all the time. And just, yeah, I, I can't, I can't speak highly enough of it. And and there are things like, you, you know, you're not alone. There's people that have been through stuff like this. Yeah, they they can help you. Um. All right, we go to Mighty Mike. Sorry for keeping you waiting. <laughs> you're good. How's it going? Doing great. Doing great. Awesome. So uh, nervous as hell because there's a lot of people in the space today. And this is probably <laughs> the first time in my adult life I've actually said this out loud. You got this, Mike. You got it, man. Hey, but I love that. Only because, only because Mike Duncan came out and helped me by starting off by skipping me. I love you, Mike. Thank you. Um, but definitely one of those things I've lived with clinical depression pretty much from middle school on. Um, my whole life and the craziest things like there's there's two parts to the story one of them is like I met my wife when right out of high school and like instantly I didn't need medication anymore like she was she was my medication or she was my drug of choice and like it just made me a happier person so like that's one thing that was like especially when you talk about life events and things like that like that really changes everything um, but then again, like recently, especially with the pandemic, um, I'm sure you guys saw, but I was in an accident three years ago and almost lost my life, but things like that happen in your life. And you still have to think to yourself, like, I'm here for a reason. I'm here to take care of somebody. I'm here to be here for somebody. I'm here to be here for yourself or someone else. So it makes you really think about things like that, especially when, when you do come off of either a medication or you do come out of a depression cycle or an anxiety cycle where you're just like, obviously I'm here for some sort of reason. And this reason mm -hmm. is other people believe me, other people uh, believe in me or things like that. So it's kind of crazy to think, but Tesho, I honestly got to give it up to you, man, because like without you in these Teshos with Tuesdays, I wouldn't know like half these people in this group right now. Like, so many people follow me. So many people respond to me because of you, honestly. And just because of you deciding to take that leap and talk about you and who you are and what you believe in, what you don't believe in, or what you like to do, or you as a person. I mean, honestly, dude, like that's, I'm tearing up because like, you're the reason for this. You're the reason that 
you know, me and Robin are now friends on Facebook and Twitter and we get to, uh, you know, shoot the shit all the time. So it's, it's, it's honestly because of you, Tesho. So I want to thank you for that. Um, and bro, thank you. No, I, I really appreciate you saying that, man. Thank you very much. So it, it, just to let you know, like you, you still mean something to somebody, whether you're a soccer star or a regular person out there. So, and Jenny, I met you probably in 2018, 2019 at a pub crawl, and I was the drunken idiot that was like, "Hey, it's Jenny Chu. Let me take a picture." <laughs> and I got to take a picture with you, so I thought it was the funnest day of my life. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Those moments are the best. I miss you. Guys. Yeah. I don't. I don't have like a. I don't know, a supporters group or anything like that now that I work national. So I, I really do miss you guys. Well, we appreciate you still. No, that's awesome. And they, hey, thanks for coming up, Mike. We really appreciate the word you said and just being brave, bro. It's awesome. And I'm glad the community is coming together, man. I'm glad that, like like I said at the beginning, Jenny, there's so many of the same people tuning in. And it's really cool to see it grow like that. A lot of that's cool awesome. People. Yeah. Um, all right, Andrew, what's up, bro? How you doing? I want to give y'all a round of applause because y'all are doing a quality job with this in a major way. And first, test show, you being the top name international that you are, you deserve the Canada support. <laughs> you came in ready. You were ready. <laughs> and, and for Jenny, we got to give the L Tree love for that youth career for sure. We got to give it to her right there. <laughs> We got to give it all the way with that in a major way for the great job that y'all doing and just down the profession. But, um, you know, Tesho, with you still doing your thing with Lano FC and, you know, Jenny, you being a colleague in this whole field. And that's something where that anxiety rush, particularly when you're interviewing players or interviewing coaches and hoping that you don't have this whole question that goes awry or you don't ask like a dumb question or feel or feel that way or whatnot. Like, that's something that I, have like, deal with, you know, all the time. And, you know, Jenny, the fact that you, like, are doing it in terms of this, having this talk and then just continuing to be on any segment, whether CBS or, you know, Orlando with that, that's something where you're, you're doing it. You're working on handling that and just being able to just get through that challenge. And it's a challenge that's so real that particularly in black and brown communities, even more highlighted in regards to that stigma towards it. And it's just something that for me has been like beneficial for me even before um, the pandemic and how that was just a needed thing to put me in a whole better place. So the fact that Tesho, you do this on Tuesdays, it's just tremendous. And it's just something where you get the major round of applause, man, for that all the way again. You just do. No doubt about it. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, other than that, y'all keep on rocking, doing your thing, and as Supop would say, keep your head up right there all the way. Andrew, I'm I don't having... know what you do. I don't know what you do, but I feel like I'm on a radio station right now. Oh. Good well, vibes. Well, you know what's funny is it, it, I, I I was the one that uh, asked uh, Gio Reyna about when um, Great Burhalter tried to give him the comparison to Maradona on his run, on his run. so I asked him that in the post game oh my god uh, us mexico and it was so funny when him and christian were just busting out yeah. laughing over yeah, that comparison that <laughs> yeah that's awesome so yeah so i guess like i guess probably either some of the friend uh well the nation's league probably in the uh, in the summer i'll be covering as well as up yeah. here with nyfc and when orlando comes through test show for sure man Got to make sure I give you the interview for sure. No doubt about that. For sure, man. <laughs> hit me up. Hit me up. Even like, I, I remember that question. And honestly, I, I love when reporters ask questions that are like a little bit outside of the box like that. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of times it's very easy to just ask like, and uh, for sure, like a lot, you have to like talk about the game and say like, you know, what are your thoughts about the game and this and that. But I love when people throw in like other questions that are just like some funny commentary like that or mm -hmm. just like to, to get to know the person a little better. Like I love those moments from reporters and I think that we're seeing it more often now, which is, which has been really cool. Yeah. You know, when I talked to Alistair Johnson and, and uh, Milan, when they, when y'all qualified for the world cup and being able to give them just different questions about how they were going to celebrate and that whole great day in Toronto, you know, for y'all um, at least up North with that, um, after the Jamaica win, it was just something them getting this a change of pace is just a thing that I just, you know, push more colleagues to do with that, where especially with you guys having social media, now it's easier to get 
different types of questions, honestly. And it's just something that just makes the whole trust factor with media, with players even better is when you're able to not just ask the same cliche questions. Not that that's something that's always a bad thing, but it's something that clearly is a thing that you can be able to get not only proper trust, but also just get an original conversation with. So, um, you know, that's something that's significant with that. But um, you all in the Orlando FC fan community, you guys are great down there. It's something where being a New Yorker is always good to see those type of vibes. Not that Red Bulls or NYFC don't have those friendly vibes, but considering the rivalry with seeing the two scenes up here, it's always something in the New York mentality that's ever present. But appreciate y'all. And y'all keep on having a great discussion with it. <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. Appreciate it, man. Uh, when, while he was talking, Jenny, I was just thinking. So while you like while you're working for CBS, how much freedom do they give you, like in terms of your your own segments, or is it like you need to hit this, this, and this, or are they just kind of like you'll be out there this time and do what you want? Like, how how does that work? Um, I think it's kind of crazy because. When I worked for Orlando City, everything is a little more structured in terms of like, we want you to talk about this. We want you to talk about this. We want you to talk about this. And with CBS Sports, it's more so like whatever the reporter, you know, wants to talk about at that time. Obviously, we have producers that help us if, if there's anything like we have questions on. We have like a, what is it, a whole stats team like every major network ha- has if we need help in any aspect. But it's definitely whatever we want to talk about and what the show wants to talk about. So we'll have a production meeting talking about what we think are important um, to hit in this weekend's game and things like that, which that kind of freedom is really cool. And I don't know if, if every network gives that kind of freedom, but CBS sports and specifically my boss has been really, really good about like, what do you guys feel passionate about? What do you guys want to talk about? Tell me and we'll make sure to get into the show. So it's, it's cool in that way. Yeah, that's awesome. So I guess what is like, like, what's your process like getting ready for a game? How much, you know, research do you have to do? How much do you, like, study the games, the teams, the individual players, like, the storylines? How do you think about that, like, going – because, like you said, you have a lot of time in between games, so I'm sure you just do a lot of research between each event. Yeah, it's super dependent on what I'm covering. So, like, when it was Orlando City, the process was just so much different than it is now on the national stage. Like, with, with you guys, I could – you know, I went to practice all the time and I saw you guys practicing so I could pick things out of what was happening at practice. I could talk to people on the side every, you know, every player that I I knew was starting, I would talk to make sure I got a quote from them. And that was so much easier because you're so close to it and you're so connected to it. Then you go to the national stage where you don't get that much access. You don't get to talk to the players like that, to the coaches like that. Everything is like very supervised and everything is way more like, um, gosh, what word am I looking for? But basically it's like, you know, there's a, there's a five inch pole now. And yes, we're friends, but we're not because you're like, I don't want to say the bad guy, like, but, but obviously the media is the media and and athletes are, have some questions about, about the media and how they're going to, okay, Tesha, don't laugh. Yeah. You know, you know, (laughs) you got to be cautious with, with the media, specifically the national media and and whatever. Um, And how, how, especially these like talk shows, how they twist things and how people talk. So it's definitely different um, at the national stage in, in terms of my process, because I don't get to talk to the coaches or the, the players like I did um, with Orlando city. Um, But now it's, it's a little more consistent in terms of, okay, it's the U S men's national team. I cover all of their games. So that process has become way easier before that. I had to do all the studying on all these players that I didn't ever watch certain leagues Um, and all these new players coming in. Now it's a little more, now now well qualifiers are over but at the end of it it was a lot easier because I'm already following those teams and already following you know certain players and knowing everything about what's happening in their leagues Um, but at the beginning it's it's a it's a learning process like what what exactly do I need to know in terms of like these broadcasts like every broadcast is different um, and every reporter is different like what exactly am I talking about during the broadcast am I talking about what I'm seeing at, at an analytical perspective Um, or am I only supposed to bring storylines that were already pre-picked before this game? Like there's different things, um, that I guess every broadcast changes and every reporter gets to decide for themselves. Like right now I'm still trying to find like exactly what is my role when I'm on the sideline? Like, yes, I have to do the interviews pre and post, but inside like in-game commentary, do I want to be an analytical voice on the end, like on the, on the field that this is what I saw, you know, my commentators can see something different, but this is what I'm seeing and this is what I'm interpreting from the game. Or am I just reporting, 
you know, what happened at practice this week, what the coach told us about the practice the previous week. I don't know. I'm still trying to find like what my, my style is and what works in a soccer space. I think like in football or basketball, that's a little different. Um, so I don't know. What, what do you guys think? You know, as, as people that watch the game a lot, watch many broadcasts, what works better? What's more important? What gives more benefit? I think like with someone like you, especially because you have such a deep knowledge of soccer, like you obviously played at a super high level yourself. I feel like it's interesting when, when you give your point of view, you know, and like people will always argue with anyone's point of view, but I feel like, you know, just like having the, the courage to step up there and be like, Hey, like I'm live right now. And this is what I see from the game. I, I like it. I think it's, it just like adds a little bit more to the, to the commentary. So. Anytime I've like heard you do that or other reporters as well, I, I really do enjoy it. Someone else should say what they think because now I'm like, oh, this is a good time to Yeah, to get we got a few because... people up here. What do you guys think? You got you got this, Jenny. <laughs> Thank you. We we be, we believe in you. No, that's, yeah, that's funny. Do you I guess one thing I was thinking about too is <clears throat> as you've moved up to like maybe higher profile some like higher profile players in games do you find that the relationship between the players and the media becomes more like a little bit more tense than it was like in Orlando City or are the players because I mean I think for the most part in MLS players are pretty welcoming like sometimes people are upset when they have to do interviews but I think for the most part people are are pretty okay with it and how have you found it you know in different leagues and different levels um, I find that the access is, is definitely different, like Champions League wise, like we're not, we're not having a nice conversation and laughing, you know, prior to a game um, before a Champions League match, as you would with like a club coach that you know very well, or coaches that you cover consistently in MLS, or even the national team, like, you know, you know, you, you talk to that coach every time before the match. That's not how Champions League is for us. And I don't know if that's just a European thing, or, or whether I'm just taking my experience that you don't have that same connection or same access to the players that we do here um, or that I did with Orlando city. So I can only speak to my experience. My experience is that the access is very different um, and, and less personal for sure. Yeah, it makes sense. And it's, it's a little bit too bad though, because kind of like you were saying with the national team, the more you get to know the players and like the more the players get to know you, I think the better it is for everyone because like you're able to tell a more colorful story like if they trust you and they and you know them, you know, than if it's just like a quick quick hit. So maybe like maybe over time, you know, as you keep doing, as you do the next ten Champions League finals, everybody will know you at that point. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be all good. Exactly, you have to gain <laughs> credibility first. Um, yeah. But there's there's other reporters on. There's Felipe. There's Jason. I don't know if they want to share their process. I'm not sure if they're that's something they're interested in. Yeah, let me invite them both up here to speak. Uh, see if they come up. Cody, what's up, bro? You hopped up here and I haven't said anything yet. So. Nah. Yeah. 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 Uh, what's up, Tesho? What's up, everybody? So my major question, it would have to be like towards kind of like spouse health, like something that, you know, your relationship actually question goes to you and your wife. Um, when you're going through a time of difficulty of like trying to pinpoint or guide each other, like what motivates you guys to like put all the cons aside and like, like kind of amp up the pros for your because, like, I'm new, newly married and stuff, and I'm trying to pursue to become a cop, and the, she's not really down with the whole fact of me becoming a cop right now. I was in the Army and stuff, and she's just, I don't know, not on the same page. So it's just, like, more of saying, like, how do I be a good husband and not be the other type of person? I guess you say, like, the person she does, doesn't enjoy, I, I don't know, like, the bad side of being, like, selfish, like, Taking a huge risk definitely comes with great, great uh, steps, I guess you could say, like you, Tesho. Like, you've taken massive steps, and, like, with that risk, you have huge reward gains. But how do I encourage my significant other on something that's been better? Because I was going to become a lineman, and she didn't want to move. Like, there was a lot of difficulties. Like, she didn't want to live at a trailer. I get that, you know. Like, she doesn't want to go back and forth, but... I'm honing on becoming a cop now. And it's just like, I don't know. It's just, I have a difficulty telling her how I feel on the situation, me being selfish towards my career path. I guess you could say like, how do I amp that up? Yeah. Some, like something that I think with that is, and that I've done like with my wife and we do it all the time is like sitting down and kind of having like, like, have you heard of a vision board? Do you know what a vision board is? Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. I'm very familiar with a vision board. Yeah, so we'll like sit down together and like make our vision boards. <clears throat> and I think doing stuff like that is helpful 
in this type of situation because like then you're both clear on like you know because like you make your vision board and you're like these are my goals personally these are my goals like for us together in a relationship these are my goals you know health wise or whatever it is and I think like just being very clear with each other on like what direction you're going because you know like if you're if you're making changes in your life um and like the other person's unprepared for it it can be like off-putting a little bit so i think just like sitting down whether it's like monthly or yearly however you guys want to do it and just like talking pretty clearly about your goals like where you're headed i think that's super helpful i don't know yeah i appreciate that like i've been i've been doing like working out getting in shape like trying to take it We're, we're looking for a home right now as you know and on top of that, like, I just been like, I don't know, very submissive, like just watching what I say, watching what I do. But every time, I don't know, I just feel like there's a connection issue between that. So I definitely sit down with the vision boards and, and try it just, I don't know. I just got to up, it's urging fire. Like when I joined the army, man, it just something I want to do. And it's just, it's good to see that. Like you guys treat each other, like you do huge risks with like real estate and crypto and, you know, getting out on the, the, you know, the field every day, you know, you get a massive injury and you inhibit yourself from doing something you couldn't do yesterday. So it's just, yeah. uh, it's just, I want to be a great guy, man. I want to be a great, like, I love everybody. And it just feels like right now I'm just, I'm uh, a goat just ramming my wife in the head for some reason. Nah, you'll get so. there, man. Just keep, keep it slow. Oh, my, my wife was chiming in now. Maybe she has something to say. <laughs> oh, there she is. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, I think what it comes down to, Cody, honestly, is like trust because you're talking about these big risks or like being a little bit selfish. Like, I don't even know how many times Tesha has come to me and said, hey, can we put some money into X, Y, Z, name, name it. And I'm just like, are you, I don't think I can say the F word, but are you kidding me again? Like, when is this going to stop? And we... You know, he is very methodical about it. Like, we spend a lot of time talking through why he thinks it's the right thing for our family, why he thinks it's the right thing for him, you know, and we spend a lot of time talking about it. And I don't always necessarily agree right off the bat, but I trust him so much. Um, Now, I say that, but and he knows this, with real estate, I've always said, do whatever you want, but I reserve the right to be mad if it doesn't turn out well. And so I just hang on to that. And anytime it gets a little testy, I remind him of that. But that's something that we've talked through together is just knowing I trust him to make the right decisions for our family. And I appreciate that he's being open and honest about it. Um, And I would want him to come to me if there was something that he wanted to be doing differently. Just like I would want him to be receptive if I came to him asking for something or saying, Hey, I think we need to make this move. So just that mutual trust and respect for each other and an openness to it. Right. Like you said, you're kind of shutting off or or being a little bit off putting to your wife. And I think that that's, um, it's better to just be open and constantly talking about it, even though it might not be the easiest thing. Yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely a, a different subject, you know, her dad was a cop. My dad was a cop. So it's just like she knows the risks and the, the great steps you have to take. And, you know, you might not come home one day. And so it's just I don't know. It's just not it's not negative in any way. Don't get me wrong. Like we're not like bickering, and battering, but it's just more like, oh, I know what's behind the scenes. And I just yeah. don't want to deal with that stress again with you. And then like me with my lineman background, like they just they said, hey, like, why don't you become an electrician? Like since you're so good with electricity and stuff, I was like, I don't. It's not what I want to do, but everyone's just pushing me in that area. I guess you could say, like, become an electrician, become an electrician. But I'm like, man, I want to, I want to become a cop. I'm well spoken, <laughs> well rounded. I love people, and I just want to help the community, even if the community would be the last thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah, yeah. Hey, just take it day by day, bro. You get there, and for sure. And I'm, I'm here for I, you, man. Just hit me up. Hit me up in the DMs, bro. I got you. I appreciate. It. I didn't mean hey, to make guys. it so down, Debbie Downer, man. I appreciate no, you guys good. so much. Everybody, K, Duncan, you, Tesho, Collins, everybody in here. I love all you guys. This Tesho Tuesday has been a, a a saving grace for my mental and physical health, man. Love that, bro. Love that, uh, Curtis. Uh, what's up, man? Bro, um, I just see this is life of a soccer reporter and the mental yeah. health thing. Yep. Yep. And 
so I can hear there's a lot of nice conversation going on. And I see there's a lot of Orlando City fans, right? Yep. Um, my favourite place I've ever visited in America is Orlando. Love that. Uh, I've never been to see an Orlando City play, unfortunately. I've seen Orlando Magic play like five times. I'm from the you... UK, of the London. Nice. You got a question or anything? I just wanted to um, say, because I saw the soccer and the talk about, you know, soccer and the mental health thing, and I, I always come on these spaces and nobody talks soccer, right? Everyone's American football, baseball, and things like that. Oh, yeah. I... Yeah. All right. We got like nine minutes left. Usually I cut it off right at the hour. So I want to get back to, I guess, Jenny, where, where do you want to go? Is there anything that you want to talk about, you know, in the last few minutes? Or I got a few questions I can shoot at you, but, you know, I want to let you take it wherever you want. No, no. Whatever questions you guys have, I'm in. I'm in. Okay. I guess, like, for me, what is, like, where where are you headed in your mind? Like, what's what's the next goal for you? Or is it just to, like, keep doing what you're doing, like, consistency or – you know, like, what's what's the pinnacle for a soccer reporter, I guess? Yeah, I think, you know, I've been trying to speak this into existence, like, recently. I haven't, like, fully committed to, like, I guess, preparing for it, which I probably should. But um, I do want to cover a World Cup in some sense. Obviously, a World Cup is this year. I don't know. That's kind of soon. But I think ideal pinnacle is to host a World Cup one day. And I think that's that's a big, that's a big one. Um, one, I don't host yet. I'm just a reporter at this point. Just a reporter is, is kind of talking down to myself. That's bad. Um, I'm a reporter at this point. Hosting a World Cup would be a big, big step. And I think that's, you know, 10 years down the road or so. Um, no, that's four years down the road. Next <laughs> next one, USA. <laughs> Thanks, Tesha. But I think, I think speaking that into existence and, and trying to prepare for that would be important. Um, but other than that, I'm just like going through and letting – letting life come to me, I think, because, you know, obviously, like, this, this career path didn't, wasn't by my choice, it just kind of happened, and I think that everything organically has happened in that sense, like, Chelsea came in a very organic way, um, CBS Sports came in an organic way, like, these things, I didn't, like, look out for them, they just kind of happened, and they turned out really well, so I'm kind of hoping that that happens, you know, as long as I stay on my P's and Q's, when something arises that, that is fitting for, for my life, I, that's what I want to do, um, so, yeah, I don't know. Maybe one yeah. day we'll say no, I, I, I like that. I wanted to host a World Cup. <laughs> I'm a, I'm saving the spaces, so we're gonna have it when, <laughs> when you're there. The World Cup final, Canada versus USA. We're gonna Ooh, we're gonna play this clip that's back. Spicy one. That's <laughs> spicy one. It's it's gonna happen. I'm speaking it into existence. So do I get the interview with you though? Do I? Get of, the course, of course, of course, of okay. course. <laughs> Making sure. Yeah. Um, I wasn't. Oh, another thing I was thinking about too is uh oh uh, well first. It, so being a host is like in the studio then versus being like on the field? Yes. Yeah. I mean, there's sometimes like studio shows on the field too, but the host would be like directing traffic and okay. um, getting to the questions. It's very much what Kate Abdo does for our show, okay. which I find like a very difficult, like it takes, it takes a really, really quality person to be able to do that. I think Jason does that for his show too. He's on the spaces now for Sirius XM. He, he also hosts. It's like a lot of, you have to be able to think of a lot of things at once. Like you're thinking of questions, you're thinking of where you're going next, you're thinking of commercial breaks, you're thinking of like your producer in your ear. There's like a million other things that I would have to learn how to manage as well. Yeah. Do you do you then like, because you've been naming people like in the industry and stuff, obviously you have just the same, like the same ideas. I have an idea of different players. Do you, you know, look at other people's styles and be like, oh, you know, I want to take a little bit of this from them, a little bit of that from this person? You know, I think I'm going to start to, Previously, you know, Eric that I, I talked about before, I don't know if you guys in Orlando City know Eric. Um, he used to be my boss, and he was the one who hired me for Orlando City. He told me not to. He was like, you have a very, like, unique style, um, and if you watch too much of other people, try to pick up other people, you just become like them. And what makes you special is that you're very different in, in the way that you present, in the way that you, like, view the game and, and talk about this and that. He's like, so his – his advice was to not try to emulate other people and to just be me because that's what made me different, um, which I, I think helps to a certain extent. I think right now I, I'm in the – I'm kind of, like, shifting my focus into, like, okay, I can still be me while gathering information from other people. 
um, and different styles and techniques that I like and don't like. So, I mean, I guess that's probably what you guys do with players too. Yeah. That, yeah. And I think what you said is perfect. Like, obviously you have to be yourself because, you know, you're not going to like outdo somebody else at their own game. But Mm -hmm. there's this like concept and they have a good YouTube video for like you. Maybe you could check it out and everybody else listening. It's called Everything is a Remix. And I feel like it sums it up perfectly. Like you can take inspiration from other people, but then just like remix it to your own way, you know. And like that's how pretty much everything gets created. Like nobody's just coming up with like ideas from scratch or their own style of play from scratch or their own style of reporting from scratch. Like you just take a little bit here, a little bit there and like remix it in your own way. And like Mm -hmm. that's where the magic is. So I think, sure. yeah, I feel like obviously you being authentically you has carried you so far and you don't want to lose that. But then there's like the greats in your industry, too, that uh, that probably have a thing or two to teach to teach everybody. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. What's up, Alex? Alex is in here. Alex always tunes in, but he never he never hops on to speak. He's probably wow. with this kid. He's probably with he's he, either he's with this kid or he's buying NFTs. That's all Alex does. Oh, wow. <laughs> Alex, can you buy me some NFTs so yeah. I can get rich one day? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Oh, there he is laughing. Uh, another well, I, thing. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I just if, if anyone wanted to ask anything, I just um, yeah, let's to get make myself available. Let's get some some. Uh, anybody got last questions? Definitely hit the request, and we'll get you up here to speak. Um, Mike, what's up? Yeah, I got a question for you, Jenny. It's it's not really related to anything. We've really talked about a bit more to your your personal experience and your view on something. So I know you've played uh, professionally and on the national stage for Mexico. And it feels like in the past, especially in the last decade, but I feel like the past five years or so, uh, the women's games seem to be very like US centric, where it's like NDO, NWSL was like the premier league that people were coming to. And now you're seeing... Uh, you know, Spain selling out games, England having massive games, and especially Mexico, we have like uh, American players snubbing the NWSL draft to go play in Mexico and they're getting these huge turnouts. I was just curious, like how you see the growth of the women's game outside of the U S and how you think that's going to affect it going forward. Cause it seems like it's, it's only going to make it more competitive, which is a USA fan scares the hell out of me, but it's still exciting to see. Hmm. Yeah, I, I'll be honest, I, I haven't been covering the women's game that much, but um, I am very aware of the different leagues and, and how well they're doing, especially when I work with Chelsea, I was covering the women's team too. Um, and then obviously I have connections with Mexico and the women's league there. So seeing that league kind of have such a great, um, I don't know, life cycle that it's been having has been awesome because that didn't exist when I played for Mexico. Like they didn't have the women's league like that. Um, and the turnout for games are amazing. Like the amount of sponsorship that the girls get is, is awesome. So it's been really cool to see all that. I do think that, you know, we know NWSL has, has their issues. Um, and it, I, it might be turning players away. Um, but I think that just kind of requires NWSL to make changes for players to stay. And I think that that is honestly good for players that want to play in NWSL. It's better for the league. Like if you're improving conditions for the players, because there is competition, I think that's better for the players. That's better for NWSL because they should have been better. These conditions should have been better. So um, I don't have a problem with it. I think that everything else around us getting better just means that the NWSL has to step up and be better to the players and, and improve conditions. So uh, I'm, I'm with it. I'm with it. (laughs) Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, we got all right. We got two more questions, and then probably wrap it up. So I think Arnold was here first. What's up, bro? Hey, how's it going? Hey, everyone. Hey, Jenny. Uh, Hi, Arnold. I just want to know who are you supporting in the World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> oh, you know, I haven't thought about it. Um, I'm I'm a Mexico supporter till I die. That's just how how it goes. I obviously have grown very. I don't know, grown a soft spot for the U.S., covering them and seeing, like, their ups and downs and the players. Um, I always want the U.S. to do well just because I, I live here. I grew up here. I'm, I'm an American soccer fan as well. But if I were to pick something else, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Canada. Uh, what, uh, you know what? I, I love it. Canada. Canada was great. And you, your coach, I, I'm a huge fan of your coach. He he did this podcast and I listened to I don't know if everyone listened to it. I don't know if it was like a BBC or something. And he really talked about that transition from the women's game to the men's game. And he talked about how it wasn't really about him getting to the men's game as it was getting money for the Canadian national teams and the soccer programs in Canada to then have more money for the women's game. Does that make sense, Tesha? 
Yeah, for sure. And I mean, he he's he's a like a professional motivational speaker. I feel like like he mm-hmm. gets the troops riled up and even like gets the sponsors riled up. You know, like he like before he came, we were literally wearing Umbro jerseys that were like two inches thick, and now we're sponsored by Nike. So you know, yep. like I feel like yep. he he's definitely been so good for the program in in a bunch of ways, and and for the women's game, like you said, like obviously he had a ton of success with the women's team, and then he's having a ton of success with the men's team, but it's all feeding like Canada soccer in general. So, right. What he was saying in the podcast, which I thought was like, like, this is really important is that no matter what he accomplished with the Canadian women's team, it wasn't going to get like the results that he wanted for Canadian soccer in general. Um, unless he worked with the men's team. Yeah. And, and we, we close to it know that that's true, you know, to get the kind of money that that can make a difference for the children's lives, for the women's teams, for everything, you do have to kind of be making the, the men's money, which hopefully one day that changes, but it's very real. Yeah, it's an unfortunate truth right now. But yeah, like you said, I, I hope it's changing because, I mean, we've just been, we, and we've seen it, like, I mean, they've had some uh, games in Barcelona and stuff selling out the whole stadium for some of these uh-huh. women's games. So it's been, yeah, the, the growth of the women's game around the world has been really great to see. And I'm sure the money flows with that. Just got to get this in. You guys ready for Drake? To hop on that Canada bandwagon. <laughs> oh, Drake's been there. Drake's the biggest Canada fan always. So yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks, thanks, Jenny. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess we decided you're just rooting for Concacaf in general, which is yeah. Fair. <laughs> <laughs> I Love haven't that. Much thought into it. Go Concacaf. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right, Noah, and then we'll wrap it up. Yeah. So um, I just wanted to ask one question. Um, like, cause I thought it was really cool when I heard Jenny speak about how she um, had dealt with anxiety and things like that. And um, I was diagnosed with panic disorder three years ago. I was um, going to universities at the time. I loved exercising and working out. I just was on the way back from the gym after a workout. I felt really weird. And I just like basically thought I was having a heart attack. I didn't know at the time it was anxiety. And when I heard Jenny talk about, you know, anxiety, what is this feeling I'm feeling? And, you know, um, I just think, you know, like if your team is playing or like something like that, you know, you're anxious, you know, like kind of like a good or bad, you know, like you're kind of like really nervous, even though you're not playing. I just got a question, like what, how do you cope? um, If times like, I'm sure, you know, like you became more seasoned and a lot better at this, but how do you cope, you know, in moments where, you're pretty nervous and you know those anxious kind of fight or flight feelings come like like what do you do in those situations that kind of help you get through it because um i'm just wondering like that's like that's awesome yeah well first of all awesome for for you to speak if if you do have anxiety like that even these things like this i was a reporter on television and jumping onto one of these gave me incredible anxiety just speaking in any sort of sense so props to you there noah um thank you i i remind myself that i didn't die last time (laughs) and i know that that sounds like incredibly ridiculous to if if people like don't understand what you feel when you have anxiety you feel like you might die or sorry i don't want to say you i feel like i might die in that yeah no i understand it's it's, yeah it's it's like very scary like when you're at your worst or like you're having like really bad panic attack and like especially in those beginning stages where you really don't know you know like before you're diagnosed like what it is exactly you know like because it can manifest in so many ways physically that it is very Mm -hmm. you know you know i mean like it's basically like your body's like natural response you know is like sending off alarms so of course you're alarmed well the hardest part is not knowing that diagnosis is not knowing what's going on yes Um, yes like you know, this, the past couple of weeks, I mentioned it earlier that I was, I was going through this depressive state and I was, I was going through withdrawals and I didn't know what was wrong with me. I just thought that something, something's off with me, something's off with me and I couldn't control it. And today when my therapist said, you're going through withdrawals, the kind of like weight that lifted off my shoulder and calmness of like, okay, I'm not insane. Like, I'm just, yeah. this is normal. This is, like, I, there's, a, there's a cure to this. There's like something I can, like that, that feeling was incredible for me and and I think that that's everyone you know like if there is something going on that you can't explain like go to a doctor like try to understand mm-hmm. you know um because that that definitely changed my life um I just remind myself that I didn't die last time and that has actually taken me a longer way than you think <laughs> like it sounds silly but like okay Jenny you didn't die last time like yes like you're here in this moment you're in your body I remind myself that I'm in my body I touch the ground I touch my my hands I um I don't know. I, I just try to make sure that I'm in the moment because what mm-hmm. my anxiety typically is, is like this, this fear of the future, fear of, you know, I'm going to make a mistake that is going to be viral. I'm going to make a mistake that will end my career. I'm going to, and it's this like future, you know, what ifs that 
keep me from from living in that moment so I have to remind myself to be in this moment be in this moment you're here for a reason you're in this moment um and just like bringing yourself back like physically mentally um Mm -hmm. it is what helps whether it's like singing a song randomly so that you can't think about what you're about to do like humming like things like that just I, I try different things because I don't have it managed at all. I still go on television and you can see, and my producers can see that I'm very nervous and I'm very anxious. As um, someone who has suffered with panic disorder for over three years and like really bad. I mean, I watch the U.S. Men's National Team games, with my friends, we talk about it, in group chats and things like that. Nothing ever gets brought up about, Oh my God, Jenny Chu is like, no, it's all, <laughs> we don't, we don't notice anything, at least from my Thank perspective, you. trust me. And like, like, especially me, like I'm really, I notice those things because like, especially when you have an anxiety disorder, you know, you're kind of hyper-focused and you notice, right. you know, like if someone says yeah. they have anxiety, that's why I was just so interested in this. I just heard, you know, oh my God, like I'm a United supporter and there's sometimes like, I don't want to watch games, you know, mm-hmm. and I can just turn the TV off. You are a very good reporter and, you know, you can't run away. So, you know, you're really brave and I'm just, you know, I mean, that's just awesome. Like how you just, you know, like those moments, if you get anxious or things like that, how you just stick through it and, you know, nobody can tell and you do great. Thank you. But I, I think I think a, a big part of it is having a big, a good support system. So I hope you have that, Noah. And it, it really does help. Like, I, I'm going to make mistakes. And I have people that text me right away and like, hey, it's fine. You didn't die. Like, like, you know, jokes yeah. like that. Like, you didn't die. You're fine. Like, to the next one. My bosses are like that. My, my producers are like that. They're like, okay, that was horrible. But next, you know, like, what's next? No, yeah, for um, sure. And like, I don't want to like talk to y'all too much because I know um, y'all about to wrap it up. But just like the thing that's helped me the most is just it's very cliche, but like my psychiatrist said, you know, like progress with anxiety and everything else, you know, it's not linear. As cliche mm-hmm. as that sounds, you know, like it's not just a roller coaster up or like a roller coaster down, you know, sometimes you're going up for a couple months and then you kind of go back down, but you know, you just kind of, you just kind of, kind of like realize, you know, it's not linear and sometimes you're going to be up and sometimes you're going to be down as cliche as that sounds, but that's really no, helped not, me a lot. It's not cliche. That's very human. That's not cliche at all. It, it is human. That's not just mental illness, which absolutely that's a part of our, our mental illness. And I know that that word kind of scares people like, oh my gosh, Jenny, she was mentally ill. And that's, I, yeah, there, there is no shame in that. Like we, there, there is no shame in that. So we need to make sure that that becomes a thing, but that's human. Like whether you have a mental illness or not, like there are ups and downs and you have good days and bad days. And that, I think that normalizing that um, and reminding yourself of that, whether you have mental illness or not, like bad days happen it's really important. Like bad moments happen. I have bad broadcasts. I have the other day I had like a halftime hit where I spoke in circles. Uh, I don't know if it was like the Costa Rica game and I was Mm -hmm. so upset. And then I was like, okay, I'm a human. I'm going to make these mistakes. And like other people probably didn't care. Like once it was over as much as I do. And I just need to like give myself grace and move on. And I think that's just like one last thing is like, we always have to realize like most times and not like we are, are are like our biggest critic you know we notice things mm-hmm. that not everybody else is going to notice and we're just too hard on ourselves and you know sometimes with a good supporting cast which I'm thankful I'm like I have and that you have and hopefully everyone else here has you know that you can kind of fall back on and you know they can kind of reassure you you know that it's not as bad as you make it out to be because it's like that's all anxiety is it's just a simple worry of the future and always your mind kind of plays it out to be a lot worse than it's actually going to be you know how many times oh, yeah. have you said in your head, you know, oh my God, I'm dreading this so bad. And then you go and do it and it wasn't half as bad. So Oh, know, it was I mean, amazing. It was so much fun probably. You yeah. get so nervous about it, but it's probably the best time you've ever had. Yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. Well I thank y'all so much for having me on. This is really cool talking about, you know, mental health and just things like that. And it's just really cool to see, you know, as cliche as it sounds, kinda of how normalized and the talking around it. It's just it's just very important and um I appreciate y'all. Well just know that you speaking about it now is like getting rid of that shame that whatever for whatever reason we attach to it just speaking about it right now and that probably helped you so much more than you realize yeah awesome thank you all so much yeah thanks for coming out no i appreciate it and jenny thank you, thank you. you're just you're a rock star like <laughs> thanks for coming <laughs> on thanks for just being so open thanks for everything you've been doing on your social media lately like it's so great i feel like tons of people can benefit from it so i just really appreciate what you've been doing no, you too, Tesho. I'm really glad you built this community. Like when, when I, you know, when you asked me, I was like, absolutely. Like of all the players that I genuinely think you're a good human, like if anybody asked me about, you know, na- you know, talk about these players that you've met, my first thing would be that you're a good human. Um, Taylor, you're, you and your wife, I saw you guys at games. I saw your kiddos, like would stalk your little kids growing up. Like I genuinely good people. <laughs> Don't laugh at that. Um, <laughs> genuinely good people. Um, and I, I love that you're building a community here and, and that Orlando City has you on their team. 
Yeah, it's been great. Uh, so you got it. What do you want to plug? Plug your Instagram, your Twitter. You said you got a YouTube too, right? Where should people oh, go and follow you right I, now? <laughs> I haven't been posting YouTubes. Um, I don't know. I guess Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. I'm starting to do TikToks. We'll see. Uh, my agent said that's the next big thing. So just if anyone knows the next big thing, as though it hasn't been a thing for a while. I just said that's what's going to hit. So follow me on TikTok, guys. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, follow follow Jenny on all platforms. And uh, yeah, and we'll see you guys next Tuesday. We're here every week talking about whatever we're talking about. So thanks for tuning in, guys. And we'll see you next week. Peace. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.